Oh, sh- sure, that happened. And if you should stick around, I'll explain how we got out of that situation. So let's get in character. So a fun situation just developed. Lake was deeper than we, uh, the river was deeper than we thought. You know, I should have actually walked through it, but whatever. Can't believe that was so deep that the bike slammed down as you saw in the video. Now we got to figure out, is there uh, water inside the cylinder heads? That's obviously a dangerous situation. All right, the situation we were in was that we were out scouting a new border crossing between Chile and Argentina. There's something like 30 border crossings between the two countries, and my fellow guides and I had done most of the border crossings before, but we had some time off between tours, and we were just out scouting a new route, and we got into this situation where sometimes between the border posts of Chile and Argentina, there could be 10, 15, or 30 kilometers or something like that, where it's just absolute no man's land in between these places. We only had one toolkit between us, between four bikes, and first couple of riders had gone ahead and didn't notice that we were hanging back this far. They were probably already at the border checkpoint when we were getting into the situation in the river crossing. And so again, they had the tools up ahead. We have no cellular, no way of communicating out there. And again, so even us as guides, sometimes we make these mistakes where it just didn't have the toolkit on every single bike. And so that's how we got into this situation. I'd even made a video a few years before this happened, uh, one of our best videos at the time, explaining how to do river crossings. We'll put a link around here somewhere, but basically in that video, I reminded everyone to always go out and sample the depth of the water with your own feet. Don't just trust that the water is shallow enough that you would have no problem getting through it on your motorcycle, but actually walk out there and sample how deep it is. Before Andres came up behind me there, and before I pulled off to the side to get a video of him going across the river, I had walked right up to the edge of the water and I still can't believe that it wasn't about a foot deep all the way through. That's exactly what it looked like. But as the video shows, huge drop off was in there, huge illusion that I never could have seen. And so that's how we ended up in this situation. Okay. So to be clear, there's really only two ways that water would ever get into the combustion chamber of your motorcycle's engine. One would be of course, through the air intake, right? Through the intake manifold and the air box and the air filter and everything. The other one would be through the exhaust. And so. The problem with the situation after you push the bike out of the water, as we did, is that you don't want to just go ahead and push that electric start button, because if you do definitely have water in the combustion chamber or chambers, and that piston that's normally coming up and compressing an air fuel mixture is now being expected to compress some amount of water, guess what? Water doesn't compress very well, as you might know. And so you could have a catastrophic engine failure of sorts where you're bending connecting rods or doing who knows what. You want to address the situation first, confirm, do you really have water in there, and then deal with it appropriately. So we were able to see that there was water in the air box. We also tried to lay the bike on its side. You could lift it up backwards or th- put it on its side and kind of try and vertically try and you know, just dump water out through gravity. That helps, but that doesn't remove the fact that, again, through those engines cycles and the turning of the crankshaft, you might not have still trapped some water in there. It depends on the position of the valves, the intake and the exhaust. And so as we get dug further into this, it was becoming very clear to us that we definitely had water in that combustion chamber. Once you've tried dumping out the water that is obviously there and shouldn't be, another thing to do if you have the tools with you would be to remove the spark plugs because by cycling the engine, by turning the rear wheel and not having spark plugs in there to keep everything pressed together, um, you could essentially burp out or spew out the water that is in there. So that would be a first typically easy thing. We had no tools with us whatsoever. So we were faced with the option of either walking away from the bike or trying to turn that rear wheel, hoping that we can maybe spew out or push through the water that definitely was in there. So there it began. Andres and I trying to turn that rear wheel over. Best to do it in sixth gear, although there's some risk involved in that. Doing so in sixth gear gives you a better leverage to turn the engine over as you're trying to turn the rear. Had to do it with something to leverage with. As you can see in the the videos, I had to find a a log or a stick or whatever that I was able to create some leverage. Just doing it barehanded was not doing anything. Especially a big twin cylinder engine like that, not something you can just turn over with your hands. But on that bike with those cast wheels, it was really a challenge having to uh, line up everything between the swing arm and the chain and the the log that I was using. We actually had to have Andres sit there and play with the clutch a little bit so we could move and get everything lined up so I could get a new purchase every time and turn that wheel just a little bit further. And you could see there was a lot of stress and some power involved just to push that water through. And after a while, uh, quite a while... (laughs) 
we were able to make some revolutions and it felt like for sure um, water had pushed through and now I was able to turn the rear wheel a bit more like you would turn it if there was no water in the engine whatsoever. You're doing this so slowly, it's not like you're able to see water spew out the back. And in fact, I believe I was actually turning it in reverse at one point. You can see um, water gurgling up through the airbox in some of those clips. Cycling the engine over without using the starter button, that was the goal because you have to at least get that water out of there somehow before you push the button. So we'd been there for quite a while working on this thing in middle of nowhere, by the way. Again, this is uh, 30 kilometers maybe between Chilean and Argentine border posts. And someone finally did come through and uh, was able to sort of cheer us on as we made the decision. Are we going to push this button? Are we going to destroy potentially the engine? Before explaining what happened, riders, please check out our web store. It's a store built by adventure riders for adventure riders. We're trying to combine our experience with these products and tools and parts and riding gear, combine all that together with our product reviews and embed them there in the web store and hopefully help you make the right decision from the get go when you're buying your motorcycle riding gear. So back to the situation. Finally, it was decided Andres did take the responsibility of pushing the button. And well, fortunately you can see what happened. A lot of water spewing out the back there. Engines running kind of weird and quiet and funny to begin with. You can see that we were fortunate by cranking over that rear wheel for quite a while. We were able to get enough water out that the engine did start, did run, and did not have a catastrophic failure like I was talking about bending a connecting rod or something like that. <laughs> Had to get that in there. The difficulty of the situation. I, actually, I was the one that encouraged him to go. I, on, in, in Andres's defense, I had kind of pointed to the river, suggesting that I had gone <laughs> through it. Um, I, but what happened next? Well, we rode away. Andres led as we were going. I got my gear on, started following him. And within a few minutes, I was starting to notice that Andres might have been riding a little bit more slowly than we were again getting dark and stuff like that and we don't have video footage at this point probably because it was dark but yeah starting to ride away and i can see something's wrong second minute third minute and all of a sudden he stopped on the side of the road and what was happening was that when we compressed that water through the combustion chamber I think we were essentially slipping water past the piston rings getting down into the body the crankcase of the engine and so what happens then, of course, the water and oil don't mix. They can make a interesting milkshake, though, as you're heating things up, uh, that water and oil mixing together along with the heat of the engine. It just turned into basically a big, frothy, foamy milkshake. All that effort, all that <laughs> work to try and, well, it was an experiment. It was something to see. Could we get the engine running safely? And I guess technically we did. But to, again, only go maybe a, a, a kilometer or two before having to stop again, have Andres hop on the back of my bike, um, which, it, of course, was a lovely experience. But um, I guess the story is that it's probably worthwhile to try this. You might be able to get water out of there uh, without mixing it into the oil too much. But there's also a good chance that you would probably be just wasting your time as we were. Like if you needed to get it done to get yourself through the final kilometer of a ride or so you don't have to go get a truck and haul it out or whatever. That's what we tried. But again, f fair warning to you, if you want to try it, you can probably expect the same thing. So my takeaway question for you is, have you ever done this? Have you ever hydrolocked an engine and what happened? Or actually, are there options to get out of the situation that I hadn't considered? Again, without tools, what did you do to get out of your situation? And I'm also very curious to know, has anyone out there done this with water in that combustion chamber, pushed that button, and what happened? I guess one possibility that we did not look at at the moment and probably wouldn't have changed too much anyway would have been what we call thump starting it and we've got another video somewhere around here that you can see where you put the two motorcycles together and sort of use one bike to start the other but we'll get into that in another video anyway riders i hope you learned something from the video if you do and you want to see more of them be sure to like subscribe share the video hit the notifications bell so you see more of our videos let us know what other topics you want us to cover and we'll get to them as soon as we can promise and um yeah thanks for watching everyone right on we'll see you out there